Improving yourself is the first step in improving everything else in your life. If you want to grow in life, you have to grow intentionally. And today we will learn how to create a growth plan for your success. We need to move from growth in everything to growth in essential things. So ask yourself two questions. Number one, in what areas are you going to grow? And number two, what would you eliminate to focus on the essential areas of growth? Can't wait to see you right back here tomorrow for day three of our journey in developing a personal growth plan together. It's very true that we're always anxious to improve our circumstances. We're always anxious to, to fix the things around us. But so many times we're not anxious to improve ourselves and, and fix ourselves. And so the whole teaching of this is, is that when we start in life, we, you probably started off like I did, and that, that is with, with goal setting. And um, well, let me just tell you a story. Kirk Kampmeyer, when I was in my early 20s, asked me what my plan for growth was. And the bottom line is I didn't have a plan for growth. I didn't know that I was supposed to have a plan for growth. Um, he was the first one that kind of made me aware that, John, growth's not automatic. If you're going to grow, you have to grow intentionally. And uh, so I, I said, okay, I'm going to grow intentionally, but, but I didn't know how to grow. I mean, no one ever, you know, it, it's one thing to ask yourself if you have a growth plan, but I didn't have a growth plan. And I went to my friends and asked them if they had a growth plan, and none of them did. And so... I, I desperately began to say, well, how do I grow myself? How do I develop myself? And so I brought something very personal to me today uh, because I'm holding in my hand the, the, where I started my growth plan. This is the dynamics of personal goal setting and it's personal success planner. And it was by Paul Meyer, Success Motivation Institute. And, and this is where I started. This is, this is my first, I, in fact, paid $799 for this. Okay, and when I paid seven hundred ninety-nine dollars for this, uh, that year I made—I I, was—I started off as a, as a pass. I, that year I made forty-eight hundred dollars. So this was huge. This was a, a lot of money, and, and I had to save up for it. I didn't have that kind of money, and so really six months of, of trying and saving, we, we finally got to this. And, and so this is where I started, and, and uh, it, it's, just, it's just very important. It's very special to me. But but I started my personal growth plan with a goal setting teaching. And it's got cassette tapes in here and it's got workbooks and I worked it through. And I really went through this personal growth plan three times. It, you know, the first time I, I got it, I thought went back to get some more and it took me, so I went through it three times. But the reason I brought this with me today is, is for a couple of reasons. One is, is, this is when people say, what's the best investment you've ever made in your life? The best investment I've ever made in my life is right here. The $799 I paid, which was an awful lot of money for me, the $799 I paid has been worth millions of dollars for me. The return is incalculable. And, and the reason I say that is because I'm going to challenge you in a personal growth way to invest in yourself. In fact, if you wouldn't invest in yourself, why should anyone else invest in you? I'm always amazed at people who Want me to scholarship them? Want to, you know, would you, but you know, would you, could you kind of give me a, give me a, 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 a free lift in my whole process? No, no. If, if you and I don't bet on ourselves, why should anyone else bet on us? The first bet that I ought to pay is, is on myself. And so this is my first kid. And, and so I brought it with you today to say that I literally started my growth, my whole growth life. Goal setting, and isn't it interesting, I'm talking to you about how do you and I lead or shift? How do we shift from, from being a, a, a goal setter to a person a, a, that just really works on growth? Because here's what, I, here's what I realized when I started in my growth plan. What I realized was this. The goals I achieved were not as great or as important as the growth that I was receiving in my life. That yes, I was setting goals and, and I was stretching towards those goals and it was a good thing, but, but it was, there was something happening in, in, internally to me that was more than, than places I wanted to go and, and numbers that I, I wanted to reach. And I, I, ex, I experienced two what I call growth changes that I want to give to you. Because I think that when you get on a growth journey, 
that's intentional, you'll discover these same changes also. And the first one is very simple, and that is that I went from growth in everything to growth in essential things. When I started off with my growth, I just said, well, I want to learn everything. And so I just read and, and studied and, and listened to tapes, and I just did everything I could to grow. And, and I was just grow, growth, grow. And, and one day it hit me that that was never going to get me to where I wanted to be. That I had to go from trying to grow in every area and everything to, to grow, get, get, get essential. What are the main things that, that you just need to grow in? Now, for me, in my 20s, I came to the conclusion that if I could, um, if I could be successful in relationships, if I could be, become successful in training and equipping people, if I could have a, an incredible attitude that would help me be an overcomer, and if I could learn to lead and, and, and increase influence, if I could do those four things, relationships, equipping, attitude, leadership, if I could grow in those four areas, that I probably could be successful. And so I committed that these are the areas I'm going to grow in. And so I, I began to eliminate a lot of stuff so that I could grow in what I would call, for me, the main stuff. And I would say to each one of you in all of our sites and here locally that that what you've got to do is when you start your growth plan, becoming intentional, you got to ask yourself, what are the areas I'm going to grow in? You can't grow in everything. You don't even want to grow in everything, but you but you got to grow in the essential things. For me, R-E-L, relationships, equipping, attitude, and leadership. And later on, I I added communication because I knew that I would spend my life as a, a connector and a communicator. And because I am a person of faith, faith. And pretty much for 40 plus years, these have been my six essentials. Learning how to connect with people, learning how to train, equip others, having an attitude to help me overcome, learn how to lead and expand influence, learn how to communicate well, and, and, and then become the person of faith that, that I really want to become. This, this, has become. this is where I really spent my time. The second change I had in the area of growth was I went from growth with a timeline to growth without a finish line. Now, this was an amazing experience that I had because when I started my growth journey, I I, I thought in terms of, well, okay, uh, there'll be a a finish line somewhere. There'll be a a time when, when I've accomplished that. There'll be a time where I have achieved this. There'll be a time where I have arrived. And so so I I had a timeline out there and... I heard Earl Nightingale say that if you spent an hour a day every day on a certain given subject, now that's back to the essentials, R-E-A-L, that stuff. If you spent an hour a day every day on a, on a certain given subject for five years, you could become an expert on that subject. Now, that really excited me because at this time I'm falling in love with leadership. I'm, I'm buying into the idea everything rises and falls on leadership. And so here we go. I, I'm excited and I said, okay, I'm going to spend an hour a day every day for five years to become an expert on the subject of leadership. And that's what I did. Now, back then, there were not a lot of leadership books out. They were mainly management books. If you go back in the, well, if you go back in the 70s and 80s, you go into bookstores, you didn't find leadership books. You found management books. And, and so I read some management books, and it, it, it kind of got me going in the, in the right way. But I would talk to people that were leaders. I would try to do leadership experiences an hour every day. And and every day, every week, as I would go through this process, I'd ask myself this question, how long will it take? Well, Earl Nightingale said it'd take five years. Well, so so now I'm I'm not only reading and studying and learning and experiencing, guess what else I'm doing? I'm counting down. I I, I think I'm Mr. Cape Canaveral. And I'm going, you know, five, you know, wow, four, you know, three, and and, and I I can smell it. I... It's out there. I'm, I'm getting close. That, there's going to be some light in this tunnel pretty soon. And I was about halfway in this five-year run of countdown until something happened. There wasn't anything I read. There wasn't anything that somebody came and set aside me and, and mentored me on or, or kind of gave me some thoughts or advice. About halfway in this journey, the inside of me switched. I was receiving so much value from my personal growth. I was, rece- I, I was learning so much about leadership. I, I, was, I, I was growing so much internally that I stopped counting. And I, I left the question, how long will it take? And I picked up the question, how 
how far can I go? 